This week in AI, mimicking the human mind with a new AI technique called Quiet Star, the Amazon Anthropic Partnership gets more serious, Zero Gravity AI blockchain startup announces a 35 million pre-seed funding round, and Adobe releases a suite of 20 plus generative and creative APIs fueled by AI. Hi and welcome back to the AI Almanac, which is the once weekly briefing of the top AI advancements or finds for the week. My name is Veronica Hylak. I am a startup owner and an AI consultant. The theme for this week is Quiet Star's loud breakthrough in AI human reasoning, and that's where we'll start today. So advancement number one, the ability to mimic the human mind with a new AI technique called Quiet Star. This week, I discovered a fascinating advancement in AI research that is starting to circulate as of this week, training AI to think like humans. Known as Quiet Star, it's a new method that instructs AI models to pause and engage in an inner monologue like humans, contemplating multiple rationales or options before responding. In contrast to traditional AI chatbots like ChatGPT, which rely almost immediately based on the input without weighing future conversations in, in its response, the novel Quiet Star method empowers AI to foresee and adapt to upcoming dialogues. The innovative approach, detailed in a paper awaiting peer review, so we don't actually know if this is legit yet, but it seems pretty legit, enhances AI decision making by producing a variety of predictions, both with and without underlying reasons, and then picking the most accurate response while eliminating the less accurate ones. Tested on the LLM Mistral 7B, QuietStar led to a significant improvement with the AI scoring 47.2 on a reasoning test, a leap from the pre-trained score of 36.3. Despite challenges in performing well on a school-level math test, as I've explained before, LLMs are awful at executing math, but we still test it because why not? Um, using Quiet Star, it scored 10.9%, still making a, a huge contribution by almost 100% from the initial 5.9 score, showcasing that the potential of this training method is enhancing AI reasoning capabilities. Quiet Start is not the only AI training technique that is attempting to teach AI systems to think like humans. Other similar approaches by Microsoft called the Microsoft's Algorithm of Thought, AOT, and the Deep Distilling Method, inspired by brain studies actually, are also pushing the bounds of AI problem solving and learning capabilities. My initial thoughts. The best way I can explain Quiet Star is this. When you engage with like a normal chat interface like ChatGPT, the model immediately begins to respond within like milliseconds, regardless of how difficult the question is. For example, as a human, if I was given a question, what color is the sky, versus explain to me the ongoing scientific questions that concern the nature of deep matter, uh, I'd probably be able to answer, <laughs> probably, be able to answer very quickly what color the sky is versus the question about scientific theories about deep matter might take some time and thought for me to work through. The problem is currently AI models do not pause and reflect like human beings would do in logic. And they don't really consider all of the options before responding. The Quiet Star method is aiming to emulate the human level of a thinking that we do every single day, in addition to allocating more resources or less resources depending on the complexity of the question. So basically, if it determined if it was a difficult question, it would throw more GPUs at it. If it was a very simple question, you know, it would scale back a bit and know it could just answer without a lot of risk. Advancement number two, Amazon and Anthropics partnership gets a little bit more serious. Ooh, we're going steady. Amazon's investment in Anthropic hit $4 billion last week, the largest investment in Amazon's 30 year history. Mirroring its influential partnership like the Microsoft OpenAI partnership, Amazon is solidifying its ownership stake in Anthropic in a similar fashion. This investment signals Amazon's confidence in Anthropic, especially after the launch of Cloud3, which allegedly outperforms GPT-4, and has positioned Amazon as a key player in the AI industry in a time where Amazon's role in the AI race has been really unknown and quiet. Anthropic is using AWS as its main cloud provider for critical tasks, including safety research and development of new AI models using AWS's Trainium and Inferentia chips, which are in competition to NVIDIA. Anthropic will build, train, and launch its next generation models using Amazon's infrastructure. The partnership is also enabling AWS customers globally to access these models through Amazon Bedrock. 
but also positions the partnership of Amazon Anthropic as a pivotal team in the AI space. My initial thoughts, finally, Amazon has entered the chat. All of my startups are on AWS. I much prefer it to Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure, but honestly, they have seemed so severely behind in the AI race in terms of infrastructure that I have really had to experiment outside of their ecosystem, mainly using Azure. Please don't kill me. I have no sense of loyalty to OpenAI and have been quite intrigued by Anthropic over the last few months, so this deepened partnership puts a lot of faith back into AWS for me. So as an overview of what's kind of going on right now, Google plus DeepMind, Microsoft plus OpenAI, and Amazon plus Anthropic. Right now, they're the great three partnerships going on and things are definitely going to be heating up. Advancement number three, the Zero Gravity AI blockchain startup announces 35 million in pre-seed funding. That is insane for pre-seed funding, let me tell you, especially because they are aiming for 5 million. Zero G Labs, also known as Zero Gravity, is pioneering a modular AI blockchain designed to address common challenges in on-chain AI applications within the Web3 ecosystem, such as improving speed and cost efficiency. Announcing this week that they raised an incredible 35 million in pre-seed funding, their modular approach allegedly will allow developers to customize blockchain systems or applications to their specific needs. A stark contrast to the monolithic structure of blockchains like Ethereum, which lacks flexibility and customization. With claims of superior speed and cost effectiveness compared to its competitors, because everyone's always better even when they don't actually have anything else, uh, Zero G Labs focuses on security and high throughput, aiming for a network capability of 50 gigabytes per second in comparison to the competition's 1.5 megabits per second. That is a huge difference. Zero G Labs is set to explore a wide variety of use cases from combating deepfakes in AI to fostering decentralized models and supporting high performance applications on their blockchain with the goal of benefiting public good and serving humanity in diverse ways. We haven't heard that one before. Currently, Zero G does not have its own cryptocurrency token, but indicates plans for a future token release, though future details remain undisclosed at this time. My initial thoughts, with the rise of cryptocurrency prices recently, the interest in cryptocurrency AI blockchain type startups makes a lot of sense. $35 million in pre-seed funding is literally insane because they haven't actually really built anything yet that is usable by a human being, it's just a bunch of claims. Um, but still, $35 million in funding means a lot of people believe in it, so definitely keep an eye out for this blockchain technology and see if it you know, comes to fruition as time goes on. Last but not least, advancement number four. Adobe releases a suite of 20 plus generative and creative APIs fueled by AI. Adobe has unveiled Firefly Services, a comprehensive suite of over 20 generative and creative API tools and services derived from AI capabilities of its creative cloud offerings like Photoshop, aimed at empowering enterprise developers. This initiative is designed to enhance content creation within custom workflows or enable the development of entirely new solutions. Pardon this interruption, I do live right by the Pentagon, you'd think I'd be concerned, but... I swear my neighborhood, like, has more crises. Alongside this announcement, Adobe also introduced custom models, allowing businesses to tailor Firefly's AI models to their specific needs integrated with Adobe's Gen Studio, offering features for image enhancement, text layer editing, content tagging, and application of Lightroom presets. Aimed at facilitating faster content production for brands while addressing concerns about brand safety, Adobe positions Firefly as a secure alternative in the generative AI space. My initial thoughts, not much to say on this one, but for those working on creative applications or using a lot of computer vision, if you can afford it, this is a good suite to be able to plug into. However, Adobe is notorious for being extremely expensive and I'm sure access to this suite, especially due to their designation for it to be for enterprise developers, uh, may make it highly inaccessible for many. And that's it for this week. I do have two announcements. The first is that I am speaking at the American Translator Association's 
Tech Talks on April 11th. It's free for ATA members or $25 for non-ATA members if you're not part of the translation industry. Please come and you can kind of learn a little bit more about one of my tools, Metalinguist. There's not a lot of AI in Metalinguist uh, launched. That's more my other startup, but still you can kind of see what I'm working on. And the second major announcement, drum roll please, I am launching a generative AI crash course on Udemy this week. It's your opportunity to learn how generative AI and AI works, how to apply it in government and business applications, how to become AI ready, to understand copyright infringement questions, data privacy questions, pretty much anything you need to get started with understanding what generative AI is, you can find in this course. It has over two and a half hours of me speaking, which I'm sorry in advance. We'll even talk about how neural networks work, parameters, transformers, a mixture of experts, MOE, vector databases, RAG, retrieval augmented generation. Pretty much all of the buzzwords that you hear all of the time, understanding what they mean is the goal of that course. It's actually called Gen AI Crash Course. Let's skip the buzzwords because it's time for us to understand what they mean. So if you just want to learn about generative AI and you don't know where to start, this is for everyone. Developers and non-developers, technical and non-technical. I break it down in a way for everyone to understand and look at how generative AI is working under the hood so that we can learn to control it better. I draw not only from my extensive experience, but from a lot of my colleagues, including Apple, SpaceX, Google, Y Combinator, Lidos, the US government, the list goes on forever and there's a lot of really good information in this course. So if you're interested, I will link it in the bio. Other than that, please remember to like, share, subscribe, tell me what your favorite thing is. I appreciate your support so much. I have one joke for y'all because I'm feeling silly today. Did you know Old McDonald's farm was taken over by artificial intelligence? AI. Hey I oh <laughs> Oh man I'll 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 let myself out now <laughs>